Hello friends, we are diving into the world of freeze drying and we're gonna bring you along for the journey. We absolutely love living in Alaska, but it is very remote and it's always in the back of our minds because we live here that we have to think about food security. We do not live in fear, but we always know that there is the possibility of ice storms, earthquakes, food shortages, snowstorms. We have also just built our lives around being prepared and preserving our own food as much as possible living here in Alaska. For us, this means that we buy a little bit extra when we are shopping at Costco so that we have some food storage on hand. We grow a garden during the summer and gather berries in the fall. We go fishing and hunting for protein to fill our freezers. We make sure to rotate through our food and are always on the lookout for ways to preserve our food to be used in the future sometime. After doing some research, freeze drying seemed like a great way to be able to preserve food for our family. We also think it's a great way to make our own lightweight hunting and camping meals. I cannot tell you how many freeze dried meals we have consumed over the years on raft trips, on hunting trips, anytime we fly and need our food to be lightweight, we will go to the store and buy freeze dried meals. And I always thought that it was something that you could just buy commercially. But in recent years, freeze drying has become available for home use. And I am so excited to take you on this journey. Our freeze dryer arrived a few days ago. We'll see how this first freeze drying experience goes, but if it goes as well as I think it's going to go, you're gonna see a lot more of this freeze dryer in the years to come as we take our meals from our kitchen and freeze dry them for future meals. Let's go check out the Harvest Right freeze dryer. So our Harvest Right freeze dryer arrived on Friday. It got dropped off by FedEx Freight. We had to check it and make sure everything was okay before we could sign off and they could leave it with us. Then over the weekend, Hunter put together this table for me so that we could have a spot to use the freeze dryer. And we are gonna set it up today. This is a medium sized freeze dryer. It is about the size of a small little refrigerator. It has a slot for four trays. And then we have to have a pump and we are gonna get all that out of this box down here. Let's take a look at what comes with the freeze dryer. All right. First of all, we have a owner's manual, which we are going to need. I have watched a lot of videos about this, but I think the owner's manual is always super important and a firmware troubleshooting guide because there is software involved in this freeze dryer. So we're gonna keep these handy. We have freeze drying trays. This is what we're gonna put our food on to put them in the freeze dryer. There are four of them. We got four additional ones because you often wanna freeze things in your freezer before you freeze dry them just to make it a lot quicker. And so four can be in the freezer and then four can be in the freeze dryer and you just can keep rotating them. Next up, we have 50 Mylar bags. These are what we can put the food in when it's done. You can also put them in mason jars, but if you're using them for camping food like we want to, this is gonna be really helpful. Next up, we have oxygen absorbers. You wanna stick these in any food that you do to make sure that no moisture is going to ruin your product. Next, we have an impulse sealer for sealing up our Mylar bags. I'm excited to see how this works. We have a power cord and two other sets of tubing. One goes to our vacuum pump and one goes to a bucket. When you defrost it, there is some water condensation that comes out, so you have to put that into a bucket. And then we have our pump. So this is the premium pump. It takes oil. And so you also do get this oil filtration system. Every 20 to 25 uses on your freeze dryer, you do need to filter the oil. Okay, this part's kind of heavy, so I'm gonna clean off this table right here and we're gonna do a little switcheroo. This was hiding in the bottom. This is a guide to freeze drying. It gives you tips on freeze drying certain foods and recipes. I'm excited to look through this. So inside of here is some oil for the freeze dryer. High vacuum pump oil. And then this is really heavy, so I'm just gonna lift it up and let the box fall. Ooh. 
And here's the vacuum pump's owner manual. I'll make sure to keep all of these for future reference. With everything out of the box, it's time to get the freeze dryer set up. And I consulted the user manual to make sure I'm doing it the right way. The first step was to put oil into the pump. First step is to take this black part off the top and then put the oil into the pump. There is a gauge on the front of the pump to let you know how much oil you have put in. And in case you're wondering, this is mineral oil that we're putting into the pump. Then you simply screw back on the top and finger tighten it. Next up, we are connecting a hose from the pump to the freeze dryer. No tool necessary to do this. You can just use your fingers to tighten it on, but make sure that you are lining it up and getting it threaded on properly. Next up, we are going to connect the power for the freeze dryer into the wall. You do need a dedicated 110 outlet. If you are going to a bigger size, like a large, you would need a dedicated 20 amp outlet, but this is size medium, so we can just plug it into our, our regular house plug. After you get the freeze dryer plugged into the wall, you actually plug the pump into the back of the freeze dryer. So you only need one plug going down to the wall for this whole unit. Then you just simply turn the power button on on the back of your pump. Next, it was time to connect the hose to the drain valve. This is used when you defrost the machine. And this drain valve has a switch on it for open and closed. That is important at the beginning of the end of your cycle, so you got to pay attention to that. And then this is going to go down into a bucket. Now we have an acrylic door here, and this has like a rubber gasket around it. You want to make sure that's clean. You want to make sure your door is clean. And then when you seal it, you want to make sure it has like two part turn. You turn once and it kind of locks it in place and then you turn it all the way to the right. Make sure to close the drain valve. It's closed. Okay, so we got it on this little touch screen here. Before we can freeze dry anything, we've got to do two tests. The first test is just to make sure it's working properly. So first of all, we're going to touch this little leaf. So first we're going to test and see if it freezes correctly. We need to run it for about 30 minutes. So I'm going to turn this pressure freeze to on. Hear it turn on. It sounds like a refrigerator. We're going to let that go for 30 minutes. Make sure that we've got the door closed. We will come back in 30 minutes and see if it is freezing properly. And then we'll test out the vacuum function. One thing you do want to keep in mind, there is a switch here for open and closed. You want to make sure it's open so that the oil can get into the pump. You don't want to ruin your motor. So this is the heat sealer. It creates that seal across the top of the bag when you want to woo, do your heat sealing. I think we're going to keep that on. It has a toggle right here for different thicknesses of bags. I think I see a little bit of ice starting to form on the side, so that's a good sign. While this is running, we are gonna take these trays upstairs and get them ready for the next step. So after we run the freeze test and the vacuum test, we need to do a burn run in the freeze dryer. You know, it has kind of that plasticky smell in there, so if you do a burn, they call it a one batch burn, you get any of the chemicals and things off of it, but we do it in a special way. I bought a really cheap $1.50 loaf of bread at the store because this bread is not gonna be good after we use it. We are going to lay them out and moisten them. I'm actually gonna use vinegar to moisten them and that is gonna help burn off any chemical smell and get it ready to use for real food. The rest of this loaf we will use, but these pieces will no longer be edible. We're just trying to get rid of that new car smell in our freeze dryer.
Okay, these are ready to go. It's been about 30 minutes. Let's go downstairs and test the vacuum on the freeze dryer. Okay, this has been going for 27 minutes. It's at negative 40. I'm gonna turn the vacuum on and we're gonna look for this number to go down to 500. That's what we're gonna see if it can happen. That means that it's pressurizing correctly inside. Oh, now we hear the pump going. If it's not able to get down to 500, that means we've done something wrong in this process and we need to do some troubleshooting. Looks like it's going down 40,000, 38, 36, 35, 33, 32, 29. All right, looks like it might be doing it. You can see that as the vacuum pump is turned on, this has sealed completely. It changed color around the edge, so that's good. We're down to 4,000 in two minutes. I think it's doing a good job. I brought a bucket in. I will replace this with a five gallon bucket, but right now we're not actually gonna be doing a full defrost because we're gonna do our bread test. So I'm just bringing this down just so I don't forget to put something at the drain pump. Okay, at six minutes, 30 seconds, we are below 500 so we can push it done. Then we are gonna open the drain valve so that it will release the pressure. and then we should be able to open the door. That was a satisfying sound. All right, we're ready to do our burn batch. We should be able to open the door now. Yes. And yes, there is. Ooh, you don't wanna to touch it with like a wet finger because it is frozen in there. We're gonna put our bread in. Okay, for the first time we're gonna push start. Then we are gonna select our pump type, which is a Premier oil pump. And we'll save that so that we don't have to ever change that again. Load trays into freeze dryer because it's already cold. We can put them straight in. We need to close this. And then we'll push continue. We can change the name of it. Help me come up with a name. I think something like Elsa or Olaf, since it's a freezer, I don't know. So usually it would have to cool for 15 minutes, but because we just did that cooling round, it was already cool. So um, I think we're started. We are freezing and then when it gets cold enough, it will change to vacuum freezing and then drying. The booklet says that it just does it all on its own. We'll come back and check on it in a little while. So this is some ch moose chili we made last week. It's really more like a taco soup. It's got beans and moose meat and corn and some tomatoes. I'm gonna add a few more spices to it because it was lacking in spice a little bit. We obviously did not win the chili cook-off. And then we're gonna freeze it. If you freeze it first, it doesn't take as long in the freeze dryer, but we're gonna freeze it right on the trays after I doctor it up a little bit. I already feel my future self thanking me for preparing this ahead of time and having it ready for like a float trip or a backpacking trip or a hunting trip. All we'll have to do is like reconstitute it with some boiling water, add some cheese and some sour cream. It's gonna be amazing. Tastes good to me. This would be even great like on a tortilla, like a taco. This is the second set of trays. We're still doing the bread outside. So this will be really helpful because you can always have something in the cycle of like freezing in the freezer before you put it into the freeze dryer. But I'm gonna put this straight onto the trays. And we're gonna get it out in the freezer, ready to go.
We're gonna get these down in the freezer, freeze them overnight, and freeze dry them tomorrow. I might even make something for this fourth tray to make sure we have something in all the trays. I found last night's moose vegetable stew in the fridge. We're gonna freeze this on the fourth tray. This is gonna make me love leftovers. Look how beautiful that is. Let's get it in the freezer. Okay, I moved some stuff around in this freezer so we could put them here, but I definitely would like to get some lids or risers so you can just stack them. Then we won't have to have a lot of surface area. We just could stack four trays right there and it would be perfect. So we'll always leave a place open for freeze dryer trays. I'm gonna run inside and grab two trays and then we're gonna talk about why a freeze dryer? Why do I think this is such a great thing and how I see us using it in the years to come? Okay, at 30 minutes in, we're still freezing. It's at 13 degrees. Do your thing. Stack these trays. I've been very excited to try out this freeze dryer. I'm glad I finally had an afternoon to get it all put together and get these things in the freeze dryer. Oh yes, hello Miss Luna. Can you say hello to our friends? When I was researching freeze dryers, one of the things that a lot of people do is make really good food for their pets. So if you love your pets, a freeze dryer could be a good option. I have heard on the radio even people selling freeze dried pets for not freeze dried pets, <laughs> selling freeze dried treats for pets. So freeze drying some salmon or some other fish or some chicken and feeding that to the pet. I'm sure they have recipes out there of making pet treats. But I really wanted to talk about the reasons why we are excited about using a freeze dryer and might be a reason why you would wanna look into getting one as well. First of all, we are a hunting adventure family. And on a lot of adventures, weight matters. If we're going on a float trip, if Mark is going on a hunting trip, if he's going in the airplane, you can't take a lot of big bulky food. It weighs too much, it takes up too much space. So by making meals and then freeze drying them, they'll be in little tiny packets, they will weigh almost nothing, and then all you have to do is add hot water. Now you can find these type of meals on the market. They're called Mountain House. There's lots of different brands, but the problem with those is one, you don't know what's in them. Two, they can get really boring and bland. They only have so many flavors. Yes, Luna. I agree. And three, they are getting more and more expensive every time I see them at the store. Like 10 to $15 for a meal for two people. But let's be honest, if Mark is out hunting, that is a meal for one person. There is no sharing one of those small bags. That is enough for one person. <laughs> As I'm thinking about it, I realize we have some funny stories about that. I'll share with you one. Uh, Mark was out with his friend Paul. They were hunting. Mark put together the little freeze dryer meal, added the hot water, stirred it up. Then you got to let it sit for a little while so that it can kind of do its thing. Then he handed it off to his friend Paul. They were sharing this one meal. Paul thought that Mark had already eaten his half and ate the entire thing while Mark was like with his binoculars looking around handed it back to him, it was completely empty, and Mark's like, oh no, dude, that was supposed to be for both of us, you just ate the whole thing. So, like I said, one of those bags, even though they say two servings, are usually for one person. I mentioned it before, but you know what's going into these meals when you're making them yourself. My sister has a lot of food allergies and she is extremely active, loves hiking and backpacking, but she can never find freeze dried meals that she could take along. So something like this would be life changing for her to get back out into backpacking because she could make her personal meals and then freeze dry them and have exactly what she needs. Now you may think, why not just use a dehydrator? Dehydrators are a great tool and we love our dehydrator. We make jerky in it, we make fruit leather in it, but a dehydrator doesn't do the same things as a freeze dryer. It doesn't make it as light. It doesn't suck all the moisture out of it. And a freeze dryer keeps 97% of the nutrients left in the food. There are certain vitamins and nutrients that do not remain when you are dehydrating, but they stay intact when you are freeze 
freeze drying and it's up to like 97% of the nutrients are retained in a freeze dry meal. So that is a great thing. The next thing that I think it's going to be great for is saving money. If something is on sale and you want to buy a lot of it, you can find a way to freeze dry it. You can freeze dry things just plain, like you can cut up carrots, freeze dry them and then reconstitute them, use them later in salads and soups and things like that or you can make them into something like a stew and then freeze dry it. So if there is a chance to stock up on something, freeze dried food has like a 25 year shelf life. We know food prices are going sky high. If you can make it at a price now and then use it 10 years from now when the prices are hopefully not a ton more, but probably will be more, you'll be really glad that you have some freeze dried stuff that can just sit on the shelf. It doesn't require a freezer that you have to have plugged in all the time. You can just have it in a bag or a jar on the shelf, ready to go when you're ready to use it. Another thing I'm really excited about is freeze drying leftovers. I probably will find myself making double batches of things in the future that I know will make good camping meals, just like the chili and the stew. Then you don't have to eat it for like three nights following. A little bit of leftovers is not a big deal, but when you make something really big and then you find yourself eating it over and over and over again, it can get a little repetitive. So I'm excited to try different meals, make a little bit extra and then freeze dry them for future meals. I know my future self will be so happy. And yes, we will do some taste testing. I don't plan on just doing this and then being like, let's save those for 10 years from now. I'm gonna pull some of them out in a future video. We will reconstitute them and we will taste them. We will probably buy some of those mountain houses and try and recreate them. The ideas I have are just limitless. So I'm really excited to just try out different things with the freeze dryer. Last of all, I'm just ready to have some fun with the freeze dryer. You can put candies in there. They're actually not freeze drying when you do the candy. It just like heats them up and makes them crunchy. I've seen some really fun videos on treats that you can put into the freeze dryer. Maybe even some of the treats that you guys send us, we will put in the freeze dryer. I think that could be really fun with the boys this summer. Freeze drying candy only takes about five hours because you're not doing the whole process. Now, if you have something that has a lot of liquid in it, it can take up to 24 hours. This is a huge investment, but from my research, people say that you can recoup your money in about a year if you are using your freeze dryer consistently because you're able to buy things on sale, you're able to buy things on in bulk and freeze dry them. If you're a gardener, you can freeze dry the things that you're harvesting. We don't get a ton of extra stuff from our garden. We just kind of get enough to eat, but we do get a ton of raspberries and blueberries. You better believe that I will be freeze drying those, then we can add them to oatmeal, we can add them to smoothies later on. I'm really excited about freeze drying some fruit this fall. I'm sure we're gonna have a ton more ideas of why I love it. I'm sure we'll also run into some hiccups and things that don't freeze dry really well. I'm gonna share the ups and downs with you and let you know how we like this Harvest Right freeze dryer. I'm sure you're gonna see it a lot in our cooking videos and things because this is the type of lifestyle we live. We love to preserve food. We're we're constantly canning things, dehydrating things. Now we're just gonna add freeze drying to that list of things to do to preserve some food. I just got back from school pickup and wanted to come check on the freeze dryer. It has moved into vacuum freezing mode. We are two hours and 30 minutes in. It is now using the pump. It's at negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can tell there's some condensation, but it is now doing the freeze drying. I think this process, if I remember when I watched some videos, is about five hours for this test run. And it just sounds like a fan. It's not super loud, I'm glad about that. But it's definitely some white noise. All right, while I was in here opening up this filter for the oil, I noticed that it changed. And I've only been in here a few minutes. So we're at two hours and 31 minutes and it's now said it's been drying for one minute. So it's now in the drying process. Pretty cool. All right, friends, I'm ready to go to bed. This just completed. It took seven hours, six hours and 57 minutes and 59 seconds to be exact. Because I'm just doing this burn run, you can't, you can choose to no defrost. If you're gonna do another batch, I'm not gonna do that tonight. More dry time or defrost. We're gonna defrost because I gotta go to bed. So it's turning off. Keep drain valve open. So we gotta open it up. Make sure there's no water in here. Open up the drain valve. Now we can open. 
open it, remove product from dryer and close the door. They're warm, but they're not too like they're not we can too hot. So this bread is just like super, super light and very crumbly. Okay, okay. now we need to close it. And then defrosting chamber. If you're not around when it's done, it will do a different process to keep everything good for you. It's a pretty smart machine. I'm ready for bed. I'm gonna go get rid of this bread. It is the next morning. The freeze dryer defrosted beautifully. The bucket had water in it. I dumped that out in the sink this morning. We are ready to freeze dry the actual food and see how it does. It's been in the freezer for about 24 hours now. I'm going to get the freeze dryer going because it needs a while to cool off. And then I'm gonna head outside and get our moose chili and moose stew out of the freezer. And we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Because these things have so much moisture in them, they're probably gonna take about 24 hours. So I'm just gonna show you putting them in and then we'll show them to you again tomorrow. It is a yucky spring day here in Alaska. It is trying to rain. It is trying to snow. It's not sure what it's doing. Yes, it is May. Oh, I'm ready for it to be warm. But today, it can't decide what it wants to do. Oh, but I'm just so cold and chilled. I just had to go change into warmer clothes and I'm just, I should have put a jacket on to come out here. I brought this so I wouldn't have to hold on to the cold trays. Okay, everything's frozen solid. Whew. They smell good. They smell like moose stew. Whew. Cold. Ready for it to be warm. It has been 18 minutes. It's now telling us to load trays and close the drain valve. We're gonna get our stuff loaded. Make sure I give it the full turn. Drain valve is closed. Push continue. And it started. It's really nice, this just does the, all the work for you. You don't have to come in and push buttons to keep the process going. But if you're like me and wonder what's actually happening, let me read to you what's happening in here because I don't quite understand it all yet. I'm sure the more I do it, I'll get a better understanding of it. But I Googled it this morning when I was talking with Mark about the freeze dryer. Let's see what it says. When Mark and I were talking about the freeze dryer this morning before he went to work, we decided to Google it because we wanted to kind of understand better what was happening in there. And it says the freeze dryer works in three phases. One is freezing, two primary drying, which is called sublimation, and three is secondary drying, which is called absorption. So first you need to freeze it. So you can, like we froze them in the freezer. It's gonna continue to freeze it in the freeze dryer, we were just trying to help that process along a little bit so it didn't take so long to freeze the food. So the freeze dryer cools the material below its triple point to ensure that sublimation rather than melting will occur. This preserves the material's physical form. So sublimation is when the water molecules go from frozen to gas and they skip that liquid form in the middle. So that's phase one. The second phase is primary drying sublimation in which the pressure is lowered and the heat is added to the material in order for the water to sublimate, which is what I was talking about. 
it turns from a crystal into a gas and skips the water phase. The freeze dryer's vacuum speeds sublimation. The freeze dryer's cold condenser provides a surface for the water vapor to adhere to and solidify. The condenser also protects the vacuum pump from water vapor. About 95% of the water in the material is removed in phase two. Very interesting. Now we have phase three, which is the secondary drying or absorption phase. This final phase in secondary drying, during which the ionically bound water molecules are removed. By raising the temperature higher than in the primary drying phase, the bonds are broken between the material and the water molecules. Freeze dry materials retain a porous structure. After the freeze dryer completes its process, the vacuum can be broken with an inert gas before the material is sealed. Most materials can be dried up to one per up to one to five percent of residual moisture. It's really amazing what's happening in there with this food. So it's getting super cold and then it's heating up. It's doing all sorts of things all within that little drum. And we're gonna have some freeze dried food tomorrow to pack away for camping, hunting, food storage. I'm really excited about this. We're gonna have some fun. Okay, friends, we are at three hours and six minutes. I'm not sure when it changed over, but we are now in vacuum freezing mode. Step two, Let's see how long this mode takes. I'm just checking on it periodically throughout the day. The vacuum freezing mode is when this pump starts to come into play. So it gets pretty warm and you just wanna make sure that you have enough oil in it. It's still sitting really good between that min and max line. Okay, I came back down to check on the freeze dryer. We are now four hours and 46 minutes in and it has been drying for an hour and 23 minutes. Very interesting. I'm very curious to see how long it goes in the drying section. It has been drying for six hours and 26 minutes. It's telling me that the room is really warm, so it may take longer to dry. So I've opened the window. It's about 37 degrees outside. We'll get some airflow through here. It was getting very hot and see if that helps. I can really tell that the chili has changed the soup not so much but the chili is definitely looking very different i'm so excited i can hardly wait till tomorrow all right it's my bedtime we are at 11 hours in eight hours of drying time it's just gonna do its thing through the night i am gonna keep this door open so that it's cooler in here and I'm super excited to see what we find in the morning. The chili is definitely looking very crumbly and the stew is looking very dried out. So that's good. Good morning, friends. It's about 5.45 in the morning. I was, I think I woke up early because I was really wanting to come and see what was happening down here. And it says that it is complete. It took 17 hours, 25 minutes. So we are gonna do, you can select more dry time. I'm gonna look at them. Gonna open the drain valve to be able to release the pressure. Moisture. Oh, it's super dry. Okay, what about this up here? Oh, yeah. Super crispy. Okay. I'm going to just push no defrost, which means we can just leave it open and let it defrost on its own rather than using more energy, I guess. And then also if I decide to do something else in a few minutes, we can, okay, I'm gonna get my basket. Good morning, Miss Luna. 
think we're going to take these up to the kitchen to work with them. This part, I'm not quite sure what to do. We're just gonna crumble it up, I think. What's this? The stew. That, that that's the, the that mousse stew happened? you made, yep. Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> this looks like, these I do not know. These look like chocolate chips, but I know these are beans. Are they? Yep. It pretty much just crumbles. I'm gonna dry some corn. <laughs> oh, that came up in like a big. So here is our chili mixture. This was a big pot of chili. Now it's a big bowl. That's not that big. Definitely lost. It just feels like so light and airy. Okay, we're gonna put it into some bags. Okay, now the stew. The stew, the stew. <gasps> this one had a lot more liquid to it. That's so gross. It feels like styrofoam. the taste for the stuff. The stew? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, it's very concentrated. It has no moisture left, so you're... It's a very concentrated flavor. It's sour. Because these are a freaking adventure. Right? Yeah, camping, hunting, boat trip. Um, do you think that's me? Okay, each bag needs an oxygen absorber just to keep it good. Okay, next we are going to be using this impulse sealer. It says plug in, next set your dial. The numbers on the dial correlate to the thickness of the bags. For example, mylar bags would be a seven, whereas clear plastic bags would be a four or five. So we need to make sure it's turned to a seven. Okay, we're turned to a seven. That means for like uh, yeah, meal not, size. You know. I don't know, yeah. Cool. Home freeze dryer. This is hot. Oh yeah, it melts it. It melts it. It's really fast. Okay, it's sealed across the top. I'm gonna turn all that dumbbell on. Oh, be careful. I know. I'm just looking at it. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Here is our first batch of freeze dried food. We got our moose chili and our moose stew. It is super lightweight. We're just gonna stick it in some sort of box in the garage. I'm really excited. That was fun. I'm thinking we might go fill some trays since it's cold still. Maybe go fill some trays and do a little bit of candy as a fun little treat for the boys after school.
So if you're unfamiliar with these Nerd Gummy Clusters, they're just like nerds on the outside and then a very chewy center. <coughs> Too sweet for 5.30 in the morning. I'm just spreading everything out so that it has room to expand. Now I gotta read the instructions on candy mode. How to use the candy application. Okay, so instead of pushing start this time, we're gonna push customize. And then we're gonna up the drying temperature. Now it says candy high temperature mode. And important to understand that in candy mode, there'll be no standard dry time. The only drying will occur when in candy mode will be the extra dry time that you set here. Usually two to three hours is enough to dry any kind of candy. So we'll go up, do two and a half hours, or we'll do three just to make sure. And then push save. And then we're gonna push start. And because it's already cold, so we got one set of nerd ropes, two nerd clusters, and one tray of sour Skittles. There we go. We can turn the candy mode on. I heard the freeze dryer beeping. I went down, turned it off, opened the drain valve, and then I was like, oh no, I'm not filming. So we're gonna go see what the candy turned out like. It's pretty wild. Okay. Here are the nerd ropes. They got huge. They were only like half the size. They're kind of still popping. I'm gonna save those for the boys. Here are the nerd clusters. Wild. Let's try one. Super crunchy. You guys remember those were really soft? On the inside, that inside is so crunchy now. Got another tray of those. And then we have the sour Skittles. Super crunchy and super sour. So here's our first haul from the freeze dryer. I'm now gonna let it defrost until our next project. It has quite a bit of ice there on the inside from that big project that we did. I got my big bucket down here. We'll come back this afternoon and let the boys do a taste test before we close out this video. The boys are home from school. They're gonna try out their freeze dried candy. I try this. Three, two, one. This is a nerd gummy clusters without gummy. Yeah, there's nothing gummy. So good. Kind of like a puff Cheeto. So I'm good. All of these. This is like cotton candy. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. Yeah. Like a str a puffy like this more. strawberry candy. Can I add some? Yeah. This is just like the same thing, but it puffed out even more. I haven't tried the nerd rope yet. It's spinning open. Mm. Mm, that was good. I think the nerds got bigger too. Yeah. It's so airy, puffy. So we airy, the, puffy, and we sweet. We used the puffer for 3,000. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome.
<laughs> Look at this, we're having dinner on the deck. Even with all that snow still down there. Dad's gonna do a taste test. Okay, so we just finished a moose burger dinner. Yum. Yeah, so this is what? Uh, Skittles? Sour Skittles. And then these are... <laughs> That's the, the rope ones. It kind of got... The I dropped rope. it and it kind of like shattered. <laughs> yeah, we'll try nerd rope. Yeah. I like Just don't gummies, bite down but... too hard. Like cotton candy with nerds. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's try this one. Okay. It almost looks like a split pea or something, how they all popped open. Not chewy at all. Not even close. It's like crunchy. Almost like a wasabi pea, but sweet and, you know that crunch? Mm-hmm. But, oh, and it's sour. Wow. You didn't do anything to the sour. Taste that. Huh. Well, interesting. Well friends, how fun has it been trying out this freeze dryer? I see a lot of freeze drying in our future. Thank you so much for coming along with us. We are so grateful for each and every one of you that spends time with us. We'll see you again real soon for more of This Alaska Life.